lines. He tells us right off the bat, he says, I'm a God that does not change. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm not a man that I should lie. There's not a shadow of turn. He says it over and over <laughs> again, trying to get it through to us. I'm not going to change. Right. I've already seen the end from the beginning. I get what I want done before I start to do it. Mm -hmm. And so now the challenge for us is having a heart to participate. And the only way you're going to have a heart is number one, we went to the scripture, I think it was uh, Romans 10, 13 and down maybe 15, where it says you have to hear something first. So a person has to slow down and listen, hopefully with the intent of doing when they hear truth. And I made a statement, I said, everybody knows truth. Well, when you have, um, when you hear truth, you have a witness within yourself. You may not have, you know, heard the gospel, you may not know anything about God, but when you hear truth, there's something within you that he put in us to draw us toward truth. But then we also have the ability to choose death or life, good or evil. And you, you know, you have to have a heart to seek the truth. Right. If Seekers, wanna, if diligently. You, if you want to see something that's on television, you don't go out in the backyard and stare at a tree. <laughs> you go to right. where it's being broadcast. If you want to know about God, and if you're seeking God, you need to go where God is broadcasting. You need to know, go where His Word is going for. Mm -hmm. You need to tune in to the Word of God. If you're just going to be entertained, you don't want to know God. God what didn't kill Jesus to entertain us. What is it that, that we looked at the word amusement and it's to ah is without and muse is without thought. So if you're going someplace where you just want your, your to ears be amused, to, to be, be amused. without thought. Yeah, then. If that's what you're doing on Sunday mornings. That's great. Enjoy I, it. That sort of lines up with being lukewarm, right? But you're not going to, you know, I don't even know if it's, lukewarm is terrible. That's sort of like a moderate, well, is that a moderate, I'm lukewarm? If, if you think about a lukewarm person, you can't get the lukewarm without first having been hot. Okay. It has to cool right. down right. the lukewarm. You won't, it'll just come up to room temperature. It won't go past room temperature, but it has to be heated up. So at mm. one point, that lukewarm person, mm. oh, they were hot for the things mm. of God, and then all of a sudden they said, you've left your first love. He said, you're no longer in love with me. You heard the story of the good news, but then you found out you had to read your Bible to find, a, you had to go to Bible studies to learn a little more. You had to study, and then you just cooled down. You said, well, I think the, the cooling down part starts off, you got to do. Well, you don't have to, well, when I say you well, got to do. Well, that's what it says. If you want this, yeah. you're going to do this. Right. But the good news of it all is he still loves us through all of that. I had read this earlier, during an earlier study, it says, Speaking of God's favor, because the, the gospel of the kingdom of God is about God's abundant favor. We have the ability to um, receive because he's already given. And so our role then is to receive what it is he's given. And it says, uh, this is a commentary. I think it's Barnes. All has been accomplished on your behalf. Stop depending on your self efforts to earn and qualify for God's blessing in your life. Do not trust in your intelligence or qualifications to bring you the blessings of God. So everyone, uh, whosoever, can participate in this plan. And the Bible tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the stuff that we want and desire will be added to us. And I think earlier we, we uh, promised ourselves that we would answer some of the questions about the kingdom. At least raise some of the questions. Or I race, don't know if we have okay. time to answer it's them. A, well, we have no ability, ability to answer all the questions because mm -hmm. we don't know all the answers. But um, uh, to the kingdom of to God. The kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. It says uh, one of the questions was, how do you enter the kingdom of God, Pastor Stewart? Well, to enter the kingdom of God, you have to be born into it. And this is why Jesus told Nicodemus when Nicodemus came to him and he said, I want a greater understanding about this kingdom. I want to become one of the members of your party. Jesus said, hey, you can't even understand. You can't know, you can't see, you can't perceive mm -hmm. this kingdom unless you're born into the kingdom. And so if, the, if no other word went out today, what you mentioned earlier when you read the scripture um, from Romans 10:13, it says, "Who." Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're calling out 
to enter into the kingdom of God and you say, Father, I believe in Jesus. I trust Jesus. I want to be a member of the kingdom. I, I want to be saved through Jesus. Just call out and just say, Jesus, I want you for my salvation. And then this is how a person is born again, by confessing that Jesus is their Lord and believing that Jesus is alive. And when we're speaking of kingdom, we're not talking about a church or a religion. We're speaking of a government. This, all, this whole thing is about a government. It's, you know, we've gotten it, we've gotten it uh, mixed up with the church. We are the church. We don't go to church. The church is going to a, a, a meeting, building, a building <laughs> to right. meet and to um, it's a meeting place for, for the, the church. church. And uh, uh, the scripture you made reference to, this is in the contemporary English version, John 3, 5, Jesus answered. Um, I believe he was asked by Nicodemus, you know, how can I enter into the kingdom? And he says, I tell you for certain that before you can get into God's kingdom, you must be born not only by water, but by the spirit. Humans give life to their children, yet only God's spirit can change you into a child of God. So the person has to be born into the kingdom. Right, not naturalized. And just because your mama was Christian and your daddy was a pastor and your grandfather was the deacon, whatever, if you do not pledge allegiance to the king for yourself, you're outside of the kingdom. You're outside. Well, that's one of the most important things you could know. Right. How do you enter the kingdom of God? So my next question, and you can elaborate it on okay. as much as you want. Where is the kingdom of God? Wherever the king rules and reigns. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> that is the kingdom. All right. And that's why Jesus said, you're not going to see this kingdom with observation. Mm. Your vision is, doesn't extend far enough. So you can only see to the horizon. I heard a guy say today, overcoming yourself so you can go beyond yourself. And I really want to go beyond yeah. myself. Yeah, that, when you think of it, this is why right. he said the kingdom of God is within you. Mm -hmm. So wherever you go. That's where the kingdom is. That's where the kingdom is. And the scripture is uh, Luke 17, 21. And uh, it says, where he says, where is the kingdom? He says, they can't say here it is or there it is. You see, the kingdom of God is within you. And this is a person that has received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, of course. All right. right. That's, 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 that's the only one because other than that, you're still in the kingdom of darkness. He translates you into the kingdom of God and then adopts you into his family. So now that you're in the kingdom of God, you can rule the kingdom of God as king. Okay, so there's two kingdoms. When a person is born, of a physical birth. They are born into the kingdom of darkness, darkness under the power of the prince of the power of the air who is Satan. Satan. And so we're influenced by all that You're he has his in his rule. kingdom. Right, right. You're a subject of his kingdom. Right. He says, I want to get out of this kingdom. It's a dead end kingdom. It's dark. I can't find my way. I can't mm -hmm. see. I've, I have a yearning for the light. I have this is a kingdom of lies and deceit. He said, I want the truth. Will someone please just tell me the truth? That's why Jesus said, I've come to proclaim the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am a king. And everyone, this is in John chapter 18, verse, around verse 32, he says, I am a king. And he said, everyone who wants the truth, he said, will listen and hear my voice. Just tell me the truth. Yes, even, someone, please, someone, what, even if no I don't choose I do the truth. With it, just let me hear the truth. Okay, so now we have how do you <laughs> enter the kingdom? You have to be born into it. And where's the kingdom? It's within each person that's born into the kingdom. And then um, this is like going back, uh, back a little bit. How did you get into the kingdom? How did, you, how did the kingdom get in you, I should say? Yeah, that's, the, that, that's, that's a good question. He says, right. the kingdom of God is within you. I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> the only thing I know is my last meal is in me. He said, well, what's in me? And in Ephesians 2.19, it explains it. And it, it says it real clear. It says, that's plain enough, isn't it? You're no longer wandering exiles. The kingdom of faith is now your home country. How? We talked about that. You're born into it. That's your homeland. So you're no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here with as much right to the name Christian as anyone. God is building a home. He's using us all, irrespective of how we got here and what he is building. So this is from the Message Bible. It's saying God is building a kingdom that is so massive 
that he put the kingdom within you so that no matter where you travel in this whole created universe, the king is on the scene. Mm. No matter what, you're in charge. Right. He said, well, how is that? Because God himself, that's why the scripture says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Why? Because he rules and reigns in our heart. So, well, how did he get in there? It says in Romans 8, 9, it says, but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be, the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He said, the spirit of God, that's God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, all reign and reside in us. So wherever we go, God goes. And, and the, the proclamation that we're making now is for people to know that they are to reign. That's the whole idea. Is to because you can, you can be an heir, but the heir is, is not any different than a servant if he doesn't know he's an heir. That's Ephesians, I mean right. Galatians 4.1. Right. It says, you don't know, you, you, you aren't any different than a servant or a slave. Mm -hmm. Even though you're royalty, even though you've inherited the throne, as long as you're a child, you're going to be under someone's control or tutor. But once you become a, an adult, you start to rule and reign. Mm -hmm. The tutor comes into you and says, go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I think not. Uh, I think not. Uh, because not we've any seen longer. down, like even when we minister in the mission, there's a lot of people that are heirs to God, children of God, and they don't know it. So then they are um, heirs without the power. And uh, we are running out of time. So, um, who is responsible for governing the kingdom? And I'll let you end up with that. Well, it says it real plain in. in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, that the responsibility, the third part of that chapter, says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulders. We are the shoulders of Christ. We are the body of Christ. The responsibility of ruling and reigning rests on our shoulders. And so this is what we want to know, that we are taking our position, as it says in Ephesians, that we are no longer children. Mm -hmm tossed to and fro by every chance wind of doctrine or religion. Because you're not about religion. This is about government. Are you going to rule and reign as king? Right. So remember, you are a royal priesthood. You are a supernatural people. And you are to rule and reign here in the earth realm now, not in the future, but now, once you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So join us next time for our future Bible studies. Thank you, Pastor Stewart.